What we have here is a snapshot of, of life in a stream about 370 million years ago. These are fossilized, broken fossils of scales, of teeth. This little bone here, uh, it's a spine of a creature known as a spiny shark. Most of the fossils are too fragmented to be of much value. But in 1995, right at this spot, Deschler came across something he had never seen before. It was a small shoulder bone, but not from a fish. It was a tetrapod shoulder, 370 million years old. Schumann and Deschler had unearthed the remains of one of life's first four-legged creatures. It was the first evidence of these early tetrapods from all of North America. And that made it very exciting. And there was another surprise. Since it was found in the stream bed, this tetrapod most likely lived in the water. And it's a very surprising discovery. It's not something we necessarily would have predicted. Why would an animal with limbs live in the water? Limbs were thought to have evolved for getting around on land. The old idea was that the fish came on shore first and then developed the legs. And what we now think is that the tetrapods developed the fingers first and then left the water. Jimmy Clack of Cambridge University suspected that the theory taught in many textbooks was wrong. The story that you'll find in many of the old textbooks and the pictures that you'll see in the books, children's books, museum galleries, is a picture of a fish stranded in a drying pool trying to support itself out of water. And it looks really odd if you look at it objectively. Clack thought there had to be a better explanation. But where to look? Only a handful of early tetrapod fossils had ever been found, most of those in a remote part of Greenland at the turn of the century. All she had to guide her was a note, scribbled in a journal from a scouting trip to Greenland years earlier. It referred to tetrapod fossils on an unnamed mountain. Clack flew to Greenland to search for those bones. Eventually, we found the spot 800 meters up on the hillside. Clack returned with four tons of rock and spent the next four years drilling. At the end, she had the most complete early tetrapod skeleton ever found, and it forever changed the textbooks. One of the first things that we found was this forelimb. At the end of the animal's limb was an unmistakable array of bones. This was a hand. This is a, a life reconstruction. The artist is using imagination on the color scheme and on the eyes. But we think this is as accurate as you can get. The creature, named Acanthostega, was clearly a water dweller. It had a fish-like tail and gills for breathing in the water. But the ends of its arms were petal shaped, possibly the first hands on Earth. This was a swimming creature. We don't know whether it could ever have come out on the land, but it certainly wouldn't have walked in the conventional sense. Basically, it's a fish with fingers. Clack's find was a scientific breakthrough. It proved that some fish had arms and legs in the water. So tetrapods didn't need to grow limbs after they got onto land. The limbs had already evolved and helped them survive out of the water. The basic pattern for limbs had been in place for millions of years. Here we have the fin of a 370 million year old fossil fish and an arm of a human. In a human arm, what you have is one bone, 
then two bones, the wrist, and the digits. In this fin, what do you have? You have one bone, two bones, even little bones that can be compared to a wrist, and then rods that face away uh, from the rest of the appendage itself, just like our fingers or toes. So you have, in a fish fin, already set up about 370 million years ago, many of the bones that are used in a tetrapod limb. With the basic pattern already there, the fin to limb transition took place in a series of small changes occurring over millions of years. There's really no goal to evolution. Evolution wasn't trying to make limbs. It wasn't trying to push our distant ancestors out of the water. What was happening was a series of experiments. In the crowded freshwater streams where tetrapods first evolved, the competition for survival was intense. These small streams were like an engine or a crucible of evolutionary change. Fish experimented with all sorts of survival strategies. Some became predators. The owner of this jaw was a 12-foot-long killer. Its teeth were the size of railroad spikes. Smaller fish developed elaborate defenses, like this heavy armor. Others packed weaponry, like this sharp spike. It protruded from behind its owner's neck. These armaments were all tools for survival in a dangerous world. Perhaps their new arms and legs gave the first tetrapods another way to survive. It was to get out of the way, it was to get onto land. And what enabled those animals to get out of the way, that is to get out of the water, were these new features like limbs. Those that did escape found a new world filled with opportunity. The transformation from water to land was only the latest example of evolution experimenting with radically new forms. An earlier transformation, perhaps the most significant of all, occurred just over half a billion years ago. and it led to all animals as we know them. Evolution tinkered with fish to make limbs. But fish carry the baggage of their own past. Think of a fish. It has a head, it has a tail, and a bunch of fins in between. That's a body plan, the way the body's put together. But that's just one of many ways of putting animals together. I mean, some animals are like discs, like jellyfish. Other animals have lots of little legs. The question is, what sort of tinkering led to these body plans? 